All right, okay. we're going to continue with our we'll continue with our post race media availabilities for the Geico 500. We are now joined by our third place finisher, the driver of the number three Dow Energy and Water Intellifresh Chevrolet, Austin Dillon. Austin, talk to us a little bit about your run out there today. Well, um, there was a little bit of everything. It started out pretty good, running up front and moving around, chasing guys, and um, man, we had a fast car. Dow Intellifresh car was fast, and um, we um, got in that early wreck. Uh, we were four wide there with Jamie and didn't work out. Uh, so I'm just proud of my guys, the Down Tell Fresh guys. Their shirts are probably working perfect today. They're, they're supposed to keep you smelling good and they worked their butts off. They had 15 stops and I'm sure that Intel Fresh is still smelling good on those guys. So um, they had 15 stops. They fixed the damage, never panicked. And that's something we struggled with this year is kind of panicking when some stuff goes wrong. And we've been meeting about it for the last couple weeks and um, just trying to figure out, you know, we can't lose our minds because sometimes it's just not your day. And, um, you know, when you think back and halfway through this race, you're not thinking it's your day. And then all of a sudden, when it comes down to it, we just kept our minds in it and kept working on the car and, and come home with a third place finish. Just uh, amazing to uh, be a part of a group of guys that worked their tails off for me. I'm so proud of them. Um, man, fun day. All right, we'll open up to questions for Austin. If you have a question, please raise your hand and we'll get a microphone to you. We'll start back here with Mike. Uh, Mike Hammer, USA Today. Austin, uh, over here, middle. Gotcha. <laughs> it could be argued that uh, some bullets were sort of dodged today with cars flying around everywhere. Uh, we've got roof flaps and tried sails and things. Is there anything else that uh, can keep these cars down that should be tried? I've been asked a couple times already what I think they should do. and. Truthfully, I'm not an aero guy, but um, I know with the smart people we have in NASCAR and all the, the companies that we can probably do something to, um, to figure it out, and we need to. I mean, I went flying last year at Daytona, and that's not fun. For guys that haven't done it, it's just not a fun, fun thing to be a part of. And um, I don't know how to fix it personally, but I know NASCAR will put their efforts toward fixing it. Uh, I know they will. They've, they've made the car safer, and that's... Uh, reason why these guys aren't we're, we're walking away from these crashes and uh, I think as a group all of us want it to be to be where we're not leaving the ground so um, we'll, we'll get some smart people on it and I have total faith in NASCAR that they'll do their job and and work on that um, but man wild day Pat Nicola NASCAR.com Austin like straight down the middle where Mike was okay well uh, you mentioned that You've been in wrecks like this, and we've all seen those. Are you able to kind of enjoy your third place finish, or are you kind of just, man, I'm glad that's over with? Truthfully, I don't know everything that happened yet, so I am really excited about my third place finish because I know what our team went through today. Um, I did just see a video of Almendinger getting out and looked pretty shook up. So um, I hope everybody's all right from all these crashes. I, I haven't really got the chance to look at all of them, but um, you know, I pray that they're all, all right and. And I think we'll make some adjustments moving forward to, like I said, hopefully kind of safen up even more. But for us, uh, I'm just proud of our Dow and Telefresh team, man. Once again, they if you guys can see the car, if you go look at it, you would never expect it to get to third. I actually think um, with it being so draggy and beat up, the one car hooked to us at the end, and he just pushed me all the way through three and four and gave us a heck of a run. And once I left that air, though, there was not much I was going to be able to do once uh, that guy happened. So I knew it was my last shot off of turn four, and we just tried it. It was, it was, uh, it was fun to be up there at the end. All right, and come up front to Bob here. Uh, Bob Pachris, ESPN. Uh, you said it was wild, and you said it was fun. I don't know, you, as you said, you didn't see, but there were two cars that were upside down at times today. My, my question is, how can it be both wild and fun? And, and fun? Well, I've been on the wild side, if you remember my wreck last year, Bob. I know what it's like to do that. I know what it is. And today, it didn't happen to me. And I, and I, for us, for fun was just watching my team work in the pits. Um, I had guys climbing on the hoods, beating the hood down. I had guys putting screws everywhere in the car to keep it together. And it worked out for us. I, I, I agree. I don't like those wrecks i mean i i promise you i have to put myself in a situation i don't want to be in to make it to to get into a good situation you have to put yourself in bad situations that you wouldn't normally do to figure out how to get the front and that's where it all comes from and and i don't know personally how to how to fix it so um the only thing i can do is i know they've got 
new innovations that they want to do to the cars to make them safer. We need to go ahead and put those in, like the, the foot box that they've been working on. And as far as aero-wise, um, if there's if we need to put something on the back of the car to keep them on the ground, I would, I'm all for it. I'm all for keeping all four tires on the ground, and hopefully we can have a solution by July. And I think a lot of drivers will be a lot, I guess, a lot more... Um, feeling better about it when we get there if we can do something to keep the tires on the ground and you'll have guys that like this speedway racing more than they do we all have to do it i don't know how many really love it um but i know our moms and wives and girlfriends they don't like it so um because you know they got to watch their loved ones put themselves in situations they don't like but as part of our part of the game at speedway racing that's always been and um you know hopefully we can figure out uh, something to um, to keep them on the ground. So is it fun if you don't wreck? If I don't wreck, yeah, I'm. I'm <laughs> I thank the Lord every time I don't wreck. Uh, I don't know if it's if it's fun that I don't wreck. Yeah, I mean I made it through it. I'm just thankful, really. Fun was watching my guys, like I said, put the work in in a damaged car and having to run to the front. We started 17th with three laps to go and finished third. So from 17th to third, that's pretty cool. I had one guy come up to me today in the Dow suite and say, you know, when Dale's last win here, he came from 15th to first. Maybe if we started 15th, we could have got there. We're going to go upstairs to the press box for a question. Uh, Brandon James, USA Today Sports. It is, is it ever galling for a driver that the amount and the spectacular nature of some of these crashes is part of the entertainment value for some fans? I try not to think of it that way. I mean... I've grown up in, in racing and watched a lot of bad crashes, and um, I don't think they're true fans if they like the excitement. I think it's more of a you know person that doesn't really know what goes on. I mean, we don't like to be a part of crashes. That's not what our job is, is to crash. Our job is to compete and have fun out there and, and put on a show. Putting on a show in, in, in that, crashes happen. So... Um, I, I don't think of it that way. I just I, I think people if they're cheering for crashes, man, I, it's not a good thing. Do we have a final question down here for Austin? All right, Austin. Thanks. Congratulations on the run today. Thanks, guys.